We want you to understand, number one, it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what you understand or, or know about the Lord. God's not interested in being recognized or becoming an object of religious ritual. He's looking for a serious relationship. Did the Lord put an ad in the paper for a relationship? He says, Lizzie, you know, I only want just serious people responding to this ad. Looking for a serious relationship. And I see some of you, I see you, I see some of you get, get your hands raised and some of you don't, but I can still see in some of you, you're just worshiping the Lord with your heart and your affections. It isn't about what's coming out of your voice. I see some of you not even singing, but you're actually worshiping a bit more than maybe some other people are who actually are speaking words out their mouth. Because it's just, it's, it's, it's coming from your heart. It's an affection. So it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you know about God right now, how long you've walked with God or haven't walked with God. Why don't you just, why don't you just turn your heart? I mean, I know, obviously, if you don't believe in God and don't think that there is a God, it's pretty much going to be hard for you to even begin to turn your heart towards God. What you turn your heart towards? But if you do believe that there is a God and that He loves you so much that He came for the purpose of bearing your sin away in His own body, destroying the separation that existed between you and God because of sin and iniquity, because you just had a different spirit than God. Huh? You ever been around when people got a different spirit than you, different attitude, different way of thinking? They're just so different, right? You can't have a relationship with them. You got nothing in common. You know what I'm saying? Of course you do. Because everybody experiences that. Well, it's even worse between man and God. It's far worse. It was just opposite. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't just opposites in a good kind of a way where opposites, you know, attract and kind of help each other. It was just completely different, absolutely different. One was a realm of darkness, the other a realm of light, and there's no way that they could agree or converge. Father in His love for us made a way that all we have to do is call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and He'd give us a different spirit. He'd give us a new spirit, one just like His. That can happen for you right now, right at the very beginning, right at the start. I watched people even in religion. I've watched them, I've watched them come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and have a real experience with God and they get stuck in the ditch of religion and ritual and never go on and let their affections mature and grow and develop for God. My wife and I have been married for 29 years now and my affection for her and her affection for me has only grown and developed because we stayed in a relationship. Huh? We still are in, you know, we, we, we continue to, you know, not just agree to, to, to be with one another for one reason or another, but because we just love each other. And that love relationship grows and develops. And, and it's nurtured by the right kinds of interactions. You know what I'm saying? If I never came home, it wouldn't be nurtured much. If I came home rarely, it wouldn't be nurtured much. If when I was home, I really didn't pay much attention to her, it wouldn't be nurtured much. If she said, hey, I love you, but I never answered back, it wouldn't be nurtured much. But then what happens if I start just doing more than that? Now I'm like, it's just always, I love you. I'm so blessed to be around you. Kisses, hugs, all the good stuff. What happens? That affection and that relationship matures and develops over time doesn't stay, it never stays what it, it cannot stay in the place and dimension in which it began. It's impossible. No relationship works that way. Today, we want you to understand that God's not interested in being recognized or worshipped as an object of religious ritual. He wants a serious relationship. And today, no matter who you are, if you just begin to open up your heart to Him and say, Oh, Lord, I want to know you. For us, it's not about the songs. I've, I've watched as there's been a whole culture of, of songs and people touching heaven based on a song that somebody else is singing. I don't have a problem with you touching heaven based on a song that you're singing. 
But when you need to carry a CD around with you to touch heaven, you got yourself a problem. You understand what I'm saying? You need a CD and some incense. Or maybe you don't even need that. Maybe you just need a CD or what? Well, I don't know. I want you to be able to touch heaven. Today, you come to a place called a house of worship, called a church, a place where the Father has poured out His Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is present. And it, sometimes it seems that we have to preach a couple of hours before people are liberated from the stuff that hinders them. We flow in the anointing, minister the Word of God by song and by prayer and by the Word. And then it's like towards the end of the meeting, the things that have been on people's lives and kept them from this realm of interacting with the Lord get stripped off for the most part. I still know that there are people who still basically they don't feel any different at the end of the meeting than they did at the beginning. I understand that. But I'm not talking about that. It's an exception. I'm talking about in general. That's what God will do. And what he wants to be able to do for you today is he wants to bring you into a serious relationship so he's no longer an object of religious ritual. He's no longer a God that's somewhere far, far away that really doesn't become relevant to what you feel and what you think and what you do. You know how you feel it. How many of you understand that how you feel has a gigantic impact on your day? You understand that we got one step towards truth. One step. And Father God has purposed that you and I should be filled with the Spirit of the Lord. And that's heaven, man. He says, continually be filled with the Spirit. That's like saying, continually be filled with heaven. He says, continually be filled with the Spirit. That's like saying, continually be filled with joy unspeakable. Ha 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 ha. He says, be continually filled with the Spirit. That's like saying, be continually filled with life and life more abundant. Who's going to say no to that? And then if you're going to say no to that, why? Oh, because you don't believe? You ain't tried nothing yet. You ain't done nothing yet. What are you talking about? You don't believe, right? Come on. You don't believe that the sun's shining outside? Get out of your dark room. Go out take your side. Take a look. It's really shining, you know. And that's especially true for people in Japan. There's so many people in Japan right now, huge population of the Japanese. Young people, they don't even go outside. They're under such oppression and depression. They stay inside the house all day. And they interact. All the interaction they do is on the Internet. That's it. It's just like the, it's just like what, it's just like the devil. It's just like the powers of darkness trying to keep people from the reality of God's goodness, his life. Today, we want the light of the gospel to shine brightly into your life. We want you to become a part of that which is going on in heaven. We want you to become a part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's not a religion or a ritual or organization. That's a realm of life. And when we, when we begin to sing, oh, Lord, you are so good. Some people say, well, what the Lord, you are so good. What does that mean? And then some people just like, oh, well, that's what we're singing right now. And we better go ahead and participate. But how about when you can feel it? Because it's real to you. It's real. We want these, God, the Holy Ghost is coming to make these things real to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed is your holy name, Lord. Thank you. Why don't you just lift your hands towards heaven? Now, you can do that all day long, you know that, with your heart. We're, we're having you yield, lift your hands towards heaven right now just to yield to the presence of the Lord. But you could actually do that all day long with your heart. Oh, Lord, you are so good. Oh, Lord, you are so good. Oh, Lord.
God, you are so good. Your mercy endures forever. Oh, Lord, you are so good. Oh, Lord, you are so good. Oh, Lord, you are so good. Your mercy endures forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you, living God. We praise your name. We praise you, Lord. <laughs> we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Holy is the Lord. We praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I give thanks unto you, Father. Hallelujah. I give thanks unto you, Jesus. I give thanks unto you, Holy Spirit. I worship you. Lord, I worship you. <laughs> Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you, my Savior. Say, I worship you, my Lord. I worship you, my Lord. I worship you by the Holy Spirit. I worship you by the Holy Spirit. I worship you in truth. I worship you in truth. Lord, you are so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you fill my mouth with laughter. You fill my heart with joy. Just try it. Lord, you fill my mouth with laughter. Uh, hallelujah. You fill my mouth with joy. Hallelujah. You fill my mouth with laughter. You fill my heart with joy. Uh, you fill my heart with joy. Oh, blessed is your name, Lord. Oh, blessed is your name, almighty God. Oh, blessed is your name, Lord. Oh, blessed is your name, almighty God. Oh, blessed is your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, you fill my mouth with laughter. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you fill my heart with joy. Blessed is your name, Lord. <laughs> Blessed is your name. Those of you that know the Lord, why don't you just try lifting your hands towards heaven? Those of you that know him. See what happens to you. The scripture says that you lift up your heart with your hands. The scripture says, let the lifting of my hands be as the mornings and the evening sacrifice. Just let your heart be turned towards heaven. We don't want to minister to your, to your information bank. We want you to touch heaven with your heart. <laughs> the spirit of the living God is here to cause you to encounter the living God. He, he is here to cause you to know that there's more going on around you than what you've been seeing. Amen. It's true.
Thank you, Father, for your loving kindness and tender mercies. Thank you, Father, for your loving kindness and tender mercies. Oh, Lord, you are so good. That's it. Some of you, some of you they're, they're, I just see a couple of transitions going on now. I know, really, I'm just looking around to see how many people touch heaven, can touch heaven, know how to touch heaven, have enough understanding spiritually to touch heaven. Because I know all of you are really smart. You can really retain a lot of information. I understand that. Not impressed, though. I don't think God is either. But how about touching heaven with your heart? How about receiving something of the goodness of God? That's what Father wants to just kiss you. He wants to hug you. He wants to love on you. He's true, man. It's true. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy is the Lord. And he's invited me in. <laughs> oh, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy is the Lord. And he is my God. And he is my friend. And he is my friend. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it, Paulina. That's it. Go there. Just go there. Just go there. <laughs> oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in thee, Lord. All oh, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. Lord, your praise shall continually be in my mouth. And my soul shall make his boast in thee, Lord. All the humble shall hear them and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name. Oh, let us exalt his name. Lord, I will exalt your name forever lord i will exalt your name oh i will exalt your name Lord, I will exalt your name forever. Lord, be magnified in me. Be magnified, O oh God. Be magnified, Lord. Be magnified, O oh God. 
be magnified, O Lord, in my life. Oh, I am washed in the blood. Oh, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Oh, and my garments are spotless. Oh, they're whiter than snow. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I am washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb and my garments are spotless they are whiter than snow I am washed in the blood of the Lamb Oh, I am washed Oh, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. Oh, and my garments are spotless. They are whiter than snow. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I am washed. They are whiter than snow. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I am washed. Hallelujah. In the blood. Oh, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Oh, and my garments are spotless. They are whiter than snow. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I am washed in the blood. Oh, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Oh, and my garments are spotless. They are whiter than snow. I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah! I'm washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. And my garments are spotless, they are whiter than snow. I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, we praise you. Father, we love you. Lord, we magnify your holy name. Lord Jesus, we praise you. Lord Jesus, we love you. And we magnify your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed is your name, Lord Jesus. Blessed is your name, Lord Jesus. Do one more song. Blessed is your name, Lord Jesus. Blessed is your name, Lord. <laughs> Blessed is your name, Lord Jesus.
Blessed is your Lord. Blessed is your name, Lord. You wrapped my soul in your glory, Lord. You captured my heart. You wrapped my soul in your glory, Lord. You captured my heart. Raptured my soul in your glory, Lord Jesus. You captured my heart, you raptured my heart in your glory, Lord. You raptured my soul in your glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Love with you. I'm so in love with you. Oh, I'm so in love with you. Oh, my Jesus. So in love with you. I'm so in love with you. Oh, I'm so in love with you. Savior, my Lord. 
Lord my Christ. <laughs> I'm so in love with you. Almighty oh, God, I'm so in love with you. Oh, blessed is your You captured my heart, you raptured my soul in your glory, Lord. Hallelujah. You captured my heart, you raptured my soul in your glory. We're so in love with you. Cause you put your love in us. Oh, we're so in love with you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we're so in love with you, Lord. Oh, we're so in love with you. Oh, we're so in love with you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We give thanks unto you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give thanks unto you, Lord. Oh, you captured our hearts. <laughs> you raptured our soul in your glory. Lord, you captured our hearts. You raptured our souls in your glory. I will praise you, Lord, while I have my being. I will worship you, O oh God, and praise your holy name. I praise your holy name. Worthy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lord of all glory and honor and praise. Oh, worthy is the Lord. Oh, worthy is the Lord. Of all glory and honor and praise. Oh, be exalted, Father. Be magnified, Lord Jesus. Oh, be revealed here in this place, oh God. 
be revealed in your manifest presence in our lives. Almighty God, hallelujah. Be revealed with your manifest presence in our lives, Lord. <laughs> Be revealed with your manifest presence in our lives, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Live it for your praise, oh God. Living for your praise, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Lord, we worship you. Father, we thank you that you've given to us an anointing to turn the lost from the power of Satan unto you. Those who are blind, oh God, blinded by the spirit of disobedience, by the God of this world, Father, we thank you that that yoke can be broken right now in the name of Jesus by the anointing. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that your church would so arise in that glory throughout this land called the United States of America, that every church would become that place set on fire by the power of the Holy Ghost, burning with the brightness of your own presence and power. Oh God, that religion would no longer have the upper hand. Religion would no longer dominate. But the truth and the relationship that you've given to us would be that which becomes visible, that the light of life may shine today. To the hearts of every man we pray. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I break off every mind-blinding spirit. In the name of Jesus, everything that would produce that work of the powers of darkness, of Satan, of the accuser, of the one who's against you, to keep you from being able to see and know God. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free. You come out of your prison now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> well, you can be seated. You know, we, we really hope, we, we hope that you come back tonight. We, we see people just drop in and visit the Lord. In fact, there's people come all the time. All they do is just drop in and visit the Lord. People go to church all the time. All they do is drop in and visit the Lord. They may be in church for two, three hours. They get about five minutes with God. And the Lord doesn't want that way. He wanted it that way. He wants a quality of life for you that's an abundant life. It's a God kind of life. And, uh, and so we, we, just, we want to encourage all of you. Come back tonight. because, And then we want you to come, we want you to come with your heart, not your, just, not your head. I mean, if over and over again... We try to tell people, you're going to have to get out of your head and get into your heart because this is a love thing. This is, this is an emotional thing, not an intellectual thing. And so we want you to come to understand what it means to just enjoy His presence, to enjoy Him. That's, what, that's why the Holy Spirit has come. I mean, people are still trying to serve God by the letter of it. And the letter can't reveal God to you. The letter of the law, the letter of the Word, that's the evaluation of it, as it were. That's hearing it but, and trying then somehow to do it out of your own human ability. But God sent the, His very own life, the Spirit of the Lord, so that you and I could begin to interact with something that goes beyond what Adam, began, Adam man, all mankind subsequently became trapped in. Your education system, all the things that you've known and learned up to this point, actually is derived from that prison. So don't hold on to the stuff you learned in prison. You're free now. Uh, you're free to go out and explore. You're not in a cell anymore. Huh? 
You don't need to sell somebody telling you what you can do, what you can't do, giving you food to eat, and feeding you the information they want you to know. You could have been liberated. It's time to go and explore. And I want to talk to you just a little bit this morning about a quality of life. And, you know, a person right now that has had some kind of a serious accident and, and they're in a coma, in a vegetative state, they don't have very much quality, they don't have very much of a quality of life, do they? And we could go ahead and, and notch it up a little bit, and now you got a person, they're conscious, but they paralyzed. Every, they paralyzed. Everything's paralyzed from the neck down. They've got to have a breathing machine to even stay alive because they're completely paralyzed. That's not a very good quality of life, is it? Anybody want to live like that? Well, people live like that spiritually. They do. They live like that spiritually. They're imprisoned. True. And then we could notch it and we could just stretch it up a little bit more. Now you just, huh? You're walking around with a morphine pack on you because you're being eaten up by cancer. It's a terrible, that's not a quality of life that you want. They're still alive and they're still fighting for life. If you ask that person, if you ask that person with a morphine pack on them, getting continual injections of morphine to do with the pain, if they want to continue to live, more than likely they're going to say yes. But they're going to tell you that they're just tired of the quality of life, but they're still fighting. They may have moments of, of, of wanting to give up and wanting to end, but they're fighting. They're fighting to, to somehow have a restoration of the quality of life that they once knew when they were running around and basically pain-free. And really, I'm, doing, I'm saying this because I'm trying to relate to you from a physical, natural realm about how people live spiritually. What's worse is that spiritually you can walk around dead. I mean, there's nobody impressed with a zombie, you know. And uh, that's, that would be the closest thing to it, of what I'm trying to talk to you about. And that would be, you know, everybody seems to be so fascinated and with the, the, living, the living dead or the walking dead or whatever this these new programs are on television. I, I don't really know much about them. I'm, if, if I'm watching television and see an advertisement for it, I quickly change the channel because I'm not interested in death. Death doesn't impress me, doesn't attract me. I'm not, nothing, want nothing to do with it. But people are dead while they live. Spiritually, they did. And so when you're dead spiritually, what you're doing, when you're dead spiritually to God, you're not alive to God, in other words. You're only alive to a sensual realm. You're only alive to those things that are around you and you're constantly going everywhere looking for something to make you feel better. You're looking for something to give you meaning. Looking for something to give you value. And everywhere you go, you find that there's nothing there that's going to work. It might work for a couple of minutes, couple of hours, couple of days, couple of weeks, couple of months, probably not for a couple of years. You just get wrapped up in it. So people do that, the whole spectrum of things, from money to drugs and everything else you can name in between. The Father has come with His love calling everybody to this wonderful place of relationship with himself. And it's time that there are beasts of people on the earth that can witness to that life. Because there's a lot of witnesses to religion, Bible knowledge, but there aren't that many witnesses really to this wonderful resurrection life that was given to us in Christ Jesus, which Jesus said you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and the realms of heaven and divine glory in order to be a, a witness of. And when that wonderful life comes, that's, that's the life of God. That's the very life that God himself has. To be able to stand here today and tell you, I have the very life that God himself lives is a wonderful privilege. And more than as a wonderful privilege, it's a wonderful experience. And, um, you know, if, if we stood here and we just continued on worshiping the Lord, what's going to happen is more and more of that that is on the inside of us 
would be expressed in an exuberant excitement. And then people that don't know anything about this realm, they're dead to this realm, they're going to be looking going, my goodness, they're really excited and emotional about something. I mean, that's really fanatic. That's fanaticism. And we'd be defined as fanaticism or weird or strange simply because you have no concept of the realm. You have no concept of the life. You have no concept of the interaction that's going on with things that are invisible. With the results of that which right now is unseen. But the reality of it is, is the more that we interact with the Lord Jesus, the more we interact with the Holy Spirit, the more that those things that right now are invisible to our eye, the, real, the more real they become to us. So then we ultimately may even begin to have our eyes open to where we actually see what's going on because the place is filled with the angels of the Lord right now. Holy Spirit's here. Christ Jesus is here. But if you're distracted with all the stuff that belongs to this world and then you're trying your best to somehow mitigate what's going on in your life with a little bit of, of religion... It's, that's not going to go very far in relationship with the Lord. And He's calling you into a place where you can know Him, interact with Him, feel Him. Experience Him. I've never seen... Christ Jesus, as it were, in the flesh. I've had visions of him, but just to be able to reach out and touch him and handle him with my hands. I've never seen him that way. But I sure have, I sure continually feel his presence. And his presence is so, his presence is so overwhelming and t intense to our emotions and to our life that it's about the only way you could describe it. It's like a fire burning. Some people describe it like volts of, of, in, of electricity that doesn't hurt you because it's just indescribable. It's just volts of an overwhelming power that is only a, a, a presence, His presence, that can't be found anywhere else. And it's so reproducible for anybody who wants these things. And if you don't have these things in your life, then the Lord's simply calling you to make some adjustments. If you've called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you've been born again and, you, and, and, and you've received this wonderful gift of salvation and you're not having a, a, a real tangible interaction with God, there's some things about your life that you're holding on to that Father wants you to let go of because they're keeping you from Him. They're holding you back from Him. And the Holy Ghost is going to show you what those things are so that you can let go of them. I'm going to read a couple of verses of Scripture to you. And... Uh, one of them is found in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Somebody said, what, what was it? What was it that separated us from the presence of the Lord? It was disobedience to God. And really it was a disobedience to a relationship with Him, to a walk with Him. It was where man in pursuit of his own self-interest because he wanted to make up his own mind about what he wanted and pursue whatever it was he wanted, found himself ultimately the prisoner of sin and the prisoner of death. Sin separates men from God. Disobedience separates men from God. What Christ Jesus did for us was he completely removed all the sin out of the way. He took it all out of the way. So that now you and I can walk into his, God's presence where no sin is allowed. When you're standing in his presence, you can't even remember if you ever sinned. It would be hard, I'd be hard pressed to do, find any sin right now. 
Okay, you, you, I'd have to sit down and think for what I have to try to get out of this. You know what I'm saying? Out of this place of interaction with the Lord like it is right now. There's just, because he removes it all. It's not just some kind of, you know, a religious concept that's not really real. He removes it all away. He allows us freely to come into his presence by the blood of Jesus. We step into the presence of God by the very life of Christ Jesus. And when we step in there, all that exists is what's in his realm of life. What exists within the framework of who he is and what he has. There's no sorrow there. There's no sadness there. There's no shame there. There's boldness and confidence there. But religion will hold you back. Religion will condemn you. The powers of darkness will hold you back. It would accuse you and say that you have no right to go in there. Attachments to things that belong to that realm of darkness will hold you back because your heart is not right with God. You still regard iniquity in your heart. You, you still like it. You still enjoy it. It's still something that you're going to do. You're going to maybe go ahead and say, Lord, I'm sorry about it right now, but you don't really mean it. And that holds you back. But Father's made it so easy for us. He's given us the ability to truly be sorry for sin, to repent, to be converted, to have a whole new life, to be filled with the same desire that the Holy Spirit has, to be filled with the same desire that Christ Jesus has in regards to where he feels about the Father, to where we don't want those things. And if we did trip up in him, we'd be deeply grieved, so deeply grieved and tormented by it, we would say, you know what? I don't want that anymore. It's keeping me from the better thing. I don't like like pain. Nobody likes pain. They like feel good. And I'm going to tell you right now, God will help us to understand the sting of death that is in sin. He will. The law tried to do it. And the law did a, a, a somewhat of a job convincing men how exceeding sinful sin is. How that sin really had as its consequence, you can't come near me. That's what the Lord would say to his people. These are his people that are with him in covenant relationship. He says, you can't come near me. Stay way out there. I'm going, to be, I, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to be in your midst. I'm going to consecrate you to be my people, but you can't come near me. He says to Moses, set bounds around the mountain so that nobody comes to, and gets close to me. Because they're separated from me. They don't have a heart to know me. They're... they're there is no provision or means to deal with the sin and the iniquity in their life. And so he, he, would, he set apart, sanctified a couple of people throughout history to be able to interact with him, all for the purpose of ultimately bringing Christ Jesus into the world. And now Christ Jesus has come into the world, taken away sin... So that anybody who wants to come to him, I don't care who you are, how messed up you are, how bad you are, all the evil things that you've done. It doesn't matter all the bad things you think that you might still do or all the evil things you think you might still do. You can come right now, call upon the name of Jesus because you're sincere about it. You want to know God. And that's God also who puts that hunger in the hearts of men. And I know God puts that hunger in the hearts of every man. It's true. The Spirit of the Lord has come pleading with men, drawing men. Just there are many who are stopped for so many different reasons. They've been educated in the secular system that has taught them things that are not true and, and that are clearly outlandish lies. And they've been gullible and bought into it because after all, it was the person with the PhD or some degree who's supposed to really know. And you believe the doctrines of men. You believe the ideologies of men. You bought in on the lie. Just because they could pull a few rabbits out of the hat, do a few sleight of hand tricks. It's true. It's true. Just because just they got smart enough to send a rocket up in the atmosphere, up in the space, doesn't mean they know much beyond that. But yet we want to go ahead and we want to esteem them, the modern day gods. There's more, there's more idolatry and intellectualism today than there was in, in wooden and clay and molten idols of yesterday. 
People don't know it. It's true. So there's all kinds of reasons why people don't respond to a loving God who, who's brought His grace that has appeared to all men, calling all men to come into this life, a wide open door. Now religion also, religion gets in the way. Well, this is my religion, this is what I believe. And, and then, of course, that's your parents' fault usually. Because you can go with whatever religion, especially if they had a strong structure of identity there, you can go with whatever religion your parents believed. If there was a, wrong, if there was a strong sense of community there and identity, it would be hard for you to break away from that. But it all comes down to this. It comes down to a real, genuine transformation that takes place by the power of God that causes you and I to have proofs that God is who He says He is and, and then allows us to experience a change that is described in His Word. An experience of His presence that is like nothing else that exists. A freedom to know Him and to walk with Him and to be that which is everything that all, everyone, all mankind would truly define as good and wonderful. They had define it as good and wonderful. They will. Those things that belong to the way and the nature of God, His meekness, His humility, His purity. You're not going to find any lying. You're not going to find any cheating. You're not going to find any stealing. You're not going to find any killing. You're not going to find any hate. You're not going to find any strife. You're not going to find any broken relationships. You're not going to find broken homes. You're not going to find all this messed up stuff that goes on in a world of darkness. Not supposed to. Not supposed to. But you're going to have a lot of it in religion. In religion, you're going to have a lot of people talking bad about other people. You're going to have a lot of people having broken relationships. You're going to have a lot of people discontent, argumentative. Huh? You're going to have a lot of people doing the same lying, cheating, stealing things that everybody else is doing. The reality of it is to make a difference. Everyone knows on the planet what, what is good. And as soon as somebody does something bad, you're going to hear it on CNN and everybody's going to just start raking them over the coals and demanding justice. Huh? But now to start having God demanding justice and everybody's going to accuse him of being something that he's going to accuse him of not being right. Well, that's weird, isn't it? Stop and think about that for a minute. God's going to demand justice. He's going to demand that things be right and it's good. I'm glad there's not going to be chaos and anarchy. I'm glad that it's not going to continue on as it is today with all of the wrongdoing and evil deeds. It's a wonderful, good thing to look forward to a day in which the earth and all that we know around us will just be filled with the goodness of the Lord. People want to talk about heaven. Heaven is a great, you know, talk about heaven as some place that you go to in the future. Well, that's wonderful that you should talk about heaven as a, good, as a place you go to in the future. That's, that's the ultimate quality of life. But God has purposed that you and I have heaven now and that it be not really that much different from heaven later. And I really believe that we have to be dedicated to heaven now if we're going to have heaven later. And then he would say, well, you don't know what I'm going through. That makes no difference what you're going through. God hasn't called you to go through what you're going through. He's called you to come and live in Him and go through what He's going through. That's what He's called. He's, uh, he's called. He's made an open door for everybody to be able to come in and live in this realm. Every single person, no matter where you at, I'm going to tell you right now, you can't blame it on nobody. You chose it for yourself. You decided. You made decisions about what you're going to believe. It is so easy to walk with God. It is so easy to know this realm of divine power and glory. Father's made easy. Hallelujah. Jesus did all the work. He finished it. He said, come on in. He said, come on in. Hallelujah. And, and today we say to you, come on in. Come on in. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3,
in verse 6. Paul says, God has made us able ministers of the New Testament and we don't minister the letter. We're not here running down all the Greek words and Hebrew words for you and lining them all up and telling you what they all mean so you can think about it and try to do better. We're here ministering the Holy Ghost. We're here ministering to you the Spirit of the Lord. We're here telling you about where God will give you a heart change, a desire change, a spirit change. See, back in the verse 3 here, he described these people who were changed. They're not religious. Somebody, somebody says, well, do you know God? Yeah, I know God. I'm a Roman Catholic. I'm a Baptist. I'm a this. I'm a that. No, that didn't mean, that mean nothing. That doesn't mean nothing. Do you know God? Yes. The right answer, yes. I have been born again. I've been transformed by the power of God. God lives and dwells on the inside of me. Right answer. That's what God did. God set everything up so that you and I one day would have an opportunity through, the, through and by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for a miracle to take place in our life. All heaven stands right now watching, paying attention to anyone who puts that name upon their lips and calls on the name of the Lord Jesus in a sincere and true heart to come and work a miracle on their behalf and destroy everything that belongs to sin and iniquity to run every demon spirit out of their life. To break off every stronghold to that which would separate you from this quality of life this abundant life, this life of God, the same life that He is living. There's many times, you know, I get around people and I can see and I can sense and I can feel what it is that they're allowing into their life, what they allow to traffic through their life, what they allow to go up and down the highway of their emotions and the highway of their thoughts, and the highway of their attitudes. God wants to deliver you from all that mess. <laughs> You get happy in Jesus, you'll never talk bad about another person the rest of your life because all you'll be able to see is good. When you step into the goodness of God, all you can see is good. There are a lot of people that are outside. They've never stepped in. They come. They believe that Christ Jesus is Lord. They believe that these things written in the Bible are true, but they're just standing outside of the gate. They've never stepped in. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ said, he said, he said, strive. He said, be in anguish about entering into the narrow gate, the narrow door. It's like, Coming up to this great walled kingdom. It's just, it's, there, there's a, you know on the other side, there's this amazing beauty and splendor. There's this amazing life. There's this, there's this amazing, every good thing that you could have possibly ever want or desire is right on the other side. But there's only one way in. And it's this very narrow gate that you've got to actually, you've got to kind of turn to the side and kind of hunch down a little bit and squeeze through to get in. That's the way Jesus described it. This is very narrow. A lot of people haven't been willing to enter into the goodness. They know about the goodness on the other side, but that's the life of the Spirit. That's where the Spirit of the Lord is. Ha, ha. That's, the, that's the heavenly life. That's the same quality of life that God Himself is living. They're stuck in religion. The worst thing about being stuck in religion is that you don't strive. You're not in anguish. You're not in great desperation about getting in because you think that you're right. You're good. And the preacher preaches and you say, well, why is the preacher picking on me? Huh? And the minister ministers and you somehow can't find the capacity to respond. God wants to change that for you today. Father wants you to show you how easy it is to walk into this abundant life and live here. I'm not talking about some imaginative land. I'm talking about a place that is reproducible over and over again. The, the statistics say that there's 750 million people on the planet today who've received this wonderful new birth experience. 
And, and I think that's great. And that's wonderful statistics. I, I just really wonder because if that's really true, then all each person needs to do is reach nine people and the whole world say this. You know what I'm saying? I have a little bit of trouble with that. Are you listening to me? I have a little bit of trouble that one seventh of the people on the planet really know the Lord because I don't think that that would be that way or even one eighth, one ninth because I believe that if every, if one ninth of the people on the planet knew the Lord, it would be overnight and the rest of them would know him too. I think there's a lot of religion. There's a lot of religion centered around the new birth experience, just like there's a lot of religion centered around Buddha. Buddha was nothing more than a man who was a Hindu who was in anguish about the fact that he was going to spend 53,000 life cycles as an insect or an animal because of his sin. And he was trying to somehow find a way out and there was no way out. And I can go on and say the same thing about other leaders of religion. But it is not necessary. What's necessary is to talk to you about who Jesus is and then to ask you, well, what are you going to do with Jesus? Because you're making a decision about what you're going to do with Jesus. You're making a decision about what he's done for you. You're making a decision about what kind of life that you can have. God says that those that come to him must believe that he is truly here right now. That's what he says. And, he gets, and that belongs to a faith realm that God says without faith it's impossible to please him. They that come to him must believe that he is. And that is it, not is existing somewhere, but is right here, right now, like he says he is. That he is God in the midst of us. That he is our God and wants to make us his people. And I am one of his people. I'm his people. Amen. Amen. And anybody else who feels the same way that I do are his people. And then you've got fruits and evidence that you are his people because you want his life. You want to you be with him. You want to stay with him. You want to hang out with him. God's not interested in being an object of religious ritual. He wants a real relationship. And if you're interested in having a real relationship with God, then that means you're going to hang out with Him and stay with Him and not be willing to be anywhere else other than with Him and Him with you. And that's it. That takes care of everything else. You're listening to me. Yes. Otherwise, it's the letter. Now you got to do this. Now you got to do that. Now you got to straighten this out. Now you got to straighten that out. Now you got to be like this. Now you got to act like that. Now you got to lift your hands. Now you got to jump. Whatever. You know? The letter that kills. Paul said in verse 3, he talks about this new birth experience. Paul's always talking about what happened, a new birth experience. Paul had a radical new birth experience. He seen Jesus and it blinded him. I'm telling you, he had to be healed. He saw Jesus for real. And after having saw, seen Jesus, Ananias had to come lay his hands on him and pray for him so he could receive his sight because he was blind. Blinded by the light of his glory. He had a real, genuine, new birth experience. And when Ananias came laid his hands on Paul, at that moment he was born again. At that moment. He could have been born again when he saw Jesus. But Jesus made me a covenant partner with him to do his work. And that's the way it goes down. People say, well, why don't Jesus come talk to me? He's set it up to where that I would come on his behalf and talk to you and have the witness of his presence so you could vis visibly see the activity of God at work in me. And so with all of his people who are called by his name. Hallelujah. That's the way it works. He said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Now go on my behalf. Go, go make disciples out of nations. That's a whole lot of power and authority. And I had one of the leaders of the church, uh, one of the primary leaders of the church of Nepal. I was talking with him this morning. and was telling me about how the church is growing and how they're continuing to build new, expand the church. And when I said, you have not seen nothing yet, man. You're you making the whole nation is your disciple. Get ready, man. It's more than you can contain. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. And I feel the same way about the United States of America. 
And, you know, listen, people think, well, all this money belongs to this one. No, it belongs to me. It belongs to the church. The God blessed this nation for, this, for the church's sake. That's how it all came down. This land was turned over to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go back and look, review the history. God blessed this nation and worked miracle after miracle of impossible things took place so that ultimately this could be a sovereign nation. And, and, and that's why in Congress there were church meetings until the turn of the century. From the, eight, from the 19th century into the 20th century. At the very heart of this nation, in every go go read the go read the mile, what's on the uh, uh, monuments in, in Washington D.C. and the leading education centers. They they put scripture up like my wife put scripture up on the walls at her home. They put scripture up everywhere. Somebody says there's a separation between church and state. Well, you know what? That may be true, but I'm going to tell you right now, God was at the heart of the state. And so we printed his name on our coins and on our dollar bills. Give me a break. You got that much proof? Are you going to go ahead? And... Come on. You know what I'm saying? And we know what God they were talking about because they put references, chapter and verses. Up. Huh? No Hindu Sanskrit up. Huh? huh? No Koran, no Koran up. Huh? I can go through the list. It's nothing. It's chapter and verse. We stamped it upon. John Adams actually said that the, our Constitution wouldn't even work where there was no fear of God. I tell you, this nation belongs to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. This nation was made a disciple of Jesus Christ, just like the authority that was given to us by him to go and do. I can't help it. Nobody hardly believes that true to be true. Everybody wants to live in the little panic world, wringing their hands, taking thought for what they're going to eat and what they're going to wear. Huh? Jesus said, don't even think about it. Take no thought of it. Huh? And think about how many of you take thought about it. We look at your checkbook. We can tell quickly. We'll give you some proofs about how you take thought about it. Let's, let's look through your checkbook. Huh? Let's look at the hours that you're clocking in to take, you know what I'm saying to you. But, you know, the Lord still loves you. Don't get me wrong. It'll definitely hinder you. Attitudes of the heart. Because you can still, you can still do many of the things that you're doing be blessed and not even be something you take thought of to get in the way of all that you're doing in the kingdom. I hope you can understand what I'm saying to you. But all of these things, they can't, they can't be learned. All these things I'm trying to describe to you, if you try to get it into your little intellectual hopper and figure it out, it's just gonna, it's gonna come up void, blank, zero, dick, no comprende. So the Lord says, I'm going to change your heart so you can get it. I'm going to change your heart so you can understand it. I'm going to do something that your intellect can't comprehend. I'm going to do something that your mind cannot understand. And so he says, he says to, the, to, the, to the people that have been born again, born of the Spirit, in verse chapter 3, he says, Inasmuch as you are manifested, you are, you are revealed to be the epistles of Christ. You literally are a written... You are a written letter, written by Christ Jesus for everybody to read. Not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. God, the Holy Ghost, when I was born again and received a new birth, put upon my life the very handwriting of God, the signature of God, in other words, His very stamp, His very image, His very glory. Why? Because all the light that He has, He gave it to me by the Holy Ghost so that I can now live in it. And it's a faith realm. It's a real realm. It's a realm that you believe. And as a result of believing and obeying, God the, God, the Holy Ghost reveals all those things to our lives. It would be impossible for any human being on the planet to have. Now that's the proof you've been born again. You have something that's impossible for anybody else to have without the power of God, without a miracle. That's it. If what you got 
anybody can have it and other people look like they got it too and they can do it on their own. You don't have what the Bible's talking about. You don't have this new covenant. You don't have what Christ Jesus died at Calvary's cross for you to have. You listen in to me. Somebody says extreme. I am extreme. I'm just like Jesus. Extreme. Take no thought uh, for what you shall eat or what you shall wear. Extreme. Uh, be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Extreme. Hallelujah. Extreme. Eat my flesh and drink my blood, Jesus said. Otherwise you have no life in you. Extreme. <laughs> Narrow is the way. And few go on that narrow way. But broad is the way to destruction. And there's where the, that's where the masses are. Extreme. That's me. That's me because I'm just like my Lord. The beautiful thing of it is it's extreme. And it's got to be extreme because it needs to be underlined how different it is from everything else. Hallelujah. He, God, Jesus is not another choice on the shelf of all the idols and all the religions and all the gods and you're going you're gonna to choose the Jesus God and the Jesus religion. <laughs> He's not there. He's not in the same lineup. He's not even in the same category. You won't even find him there. <laughs> and then if people have in their hearts other gods alongside him, he, he, he leaves. You can have no other God alongside him. And the God of self. The God of your own will. God of your own purposes. Will rob you from the quality of life that God has for you. I, I pray in Jesus' name that your eyes would be open. That you could see the devices that Satan is using against you to destroy your soul. And you call it pleasurable and it's hell. It's hell. You call it enjoyment and entertainment. And all it is is participating with death. Every sin produces death. God's law is true. He says he's written his ways, his nature, his life on the fleshly tables of our heart. That's what all the prophets said concerning the new covenant God would make. He would take away the stony, adamant heart that cannot respond to God, that can't feel God's presence. Somebody said, I can't feel God's presence. You need to get rid of your stony heart. I'll take away the stony heart, the heart that cannot respond to me, that cannot know me, that cannot interact with me, and I will give you a heart of flesh, one sensitive, so that you may know me. Jeremiah 31, 33. Ezekiel 11, 19 through 20. Ezekiel 36, 26, just to name a few, just to get warmed up. Are you with me? Just to get warmed up about the day that we now live in right now where he lives in us and walks in us. Hallelujah. That Paul's going to once again talk about very shortly here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Don't turn there. Verse 16. And I, I'm telling you this because I don't want you to get, I don't want you to take a side road. There's a lot of people along the way, they're saying, oh, come this way, go this way, don't do that, go this way. And there's all these side roads when you've been born again and you begin to walk this life that has been provided for us in Christ Jesus as you walk in the Spirit. There's all these people saying, go over here, or go over this. Here's Christ here. Oh no, Christ is over here. Don't go there. Don't listen. Don't be persuaded. Understand what God has said concerning Himself and the kind of quality of life that He gives and then find out whether Christ be in you or not. And if you've got a problem with that and you're not experiencing His presence and living the kind of life that He has given to us as abundant life, then all you need to do is cry out to God in sincerity and truth and He'll change you. <laughs> He's no respecter of persons. He's given this. His presence produces holiness. Without His presence, there is no holiness. Without holiness, no man can see God. Holiness is not produced because you listen and you do all the things out of your own human effort and discipline that God says to do it because He said the law was weak and that it depended upon the flesh. Human ability. He said, but what's happened now is He's ministered to us this transformation by the Holy Ghost. 
And then he talks to us about this glory here that now we do it not by, a, not by the letter, not by a, a trying to comprehend what God says in his word and then through our own efforts do it, but by the power of the Holy Ghost who lives on the inside of us, he reveals the word of God through us by revealing Christ Jesus to us, by revealing this life in our, in our own life. Where we're now, it's, it's not about all the things that you're going to do in order to please God. It's rather about just coming to Him and being captivated by Him. And as, as we were singing truly, captivated and raptured in His presence. And then out of that, all that He has purposed to have in our life, all of the manner of living, all of the quality and conduct of life that He has purposed for our lives revealed through us. Not an effort of human ability. It's the result of walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's just it. That's just it. It's a new life. I got myself a new life. Amen. I got a new employer. Amen. I'm living in a new country. Been I moved up. Moved out. Moved up. Moved out from where I was living. Huh? I'm not in the same place anymore. Not in the same surroundings anymore. A real translation translated out of the kingdom of this world into the kingdom of the dear son. I'm not waiting to live under his rule and reign. It's going to come to pass in the near future. He's going to take his power and come rule and reign. I'm living now in his rule and reign. That's why I don't have disease in my body and I won't allow disease in my body. I'm living in his rule and reign. That's why I have peace and won't allow worry. I'm living in his rule and reign. That's why I have love and not hate. I'm living in his rule and reign. That's why I have his manifest presence instead of living a self-interest life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's all that I need. And he's all that I want. And when you determine that in your heart, God's going to make sure that that's exactly what you have. Huh? Hallelujah. He'll capture you. He'll captivate you. So many people really begin to be touched deeply in their emotions towards God when some disaster is happening in their life. Like they got a sick loved one who's on their deathbed. They get really deep with God. They have a disaster. They begin to get really deep with God. I'm really deep with God because I've been born of the Spirit. I don't need disaster and problems. I'm deep with Him because He's in me, living in me. He produces this very desire and passion for God. Huh? I don't have, I'm not manipulated by circumstances and by surroundings. Hallelujah. I'm inspired. Hallelujah. By the living presence of the living God. Paul goes on to talk about the spirit that gives life. And then ultimately he concludes down here in verse 17. He says, now the Lord is that spirit. Hallelujah. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, you've now been liberated. You've got jubilee. Amen. Huh? Yeah. And some people say, well, they, they, they liberated. They think, well, now you can go do whatever you want to do. That's not what it's jubilee. You've been liberated. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me to liberate you. That's what Jesus said. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, you liberated. You liberated from the sin that the law condemned. You're liberated from the, the, the conduct of living that was different and other than God and now declared to be one with Him, acceptable in the beloved. You His and He's yours. My goodness, if you lived in that all day long, if it, that just became the heart and attitude and thoughts of your mind, my goodness, everything would change. And I pray in Jesus' name you decide that that's the way it's going to be from now on. That you for this day on live the good life. <laughs> a very, the highest quality of life that money cannot buy. If somebody deposit a trillion dollars in your bank account today, in gold bullion, huh? And made you the king of the world, you still wouldn't have the quality of life that I'm talking about right now. You, what you'd have is you'd have a worse quality of life because now you'd have more burden than you could possibly ever imagine. You have more problems, more issues, more responsibilities that crush you in the first, first hour. You'd probably be dead. Huh? Unless you just lived in imagination about it for a week and then finally all the stuff sunk in and you realized what all you were responsible for and what all you had to do, it's over. Huh? Your heart would fail you for fear. Of course, nobody thinks so. They got an imagination about themselves that just is. 
Let me read another verse of Scripture to you. Romans chapter 7. Let me say this to you one more time. The Lord is not interested in being an object of religious ritual. I'm going to say it again. God is grieved by being an object of a religious ritual. Huh? I'm going to say it again. God is not interested in being an object of religious ritual. Pentecostal ritual, Catholic ritual, fundamental ritual, any ritual. He wants a relationship. He wants you to feel him. He wants you to know him. He's giving you a heart that you may know him, interact with him. Wow. Would you be willing to believe that today? Yes. Giving you the ability to now come under his lordship, governorship, rulership, to where God the Holy Ghost is one with your spirit, hooked up with you, and is the master of everything you feel. Say it again. Master of everything you feel. Master of every attitude you have. Master of everything you think. Master of every desire. Are you listening to me? You think I'm pretending? You think I'm talking about... I know some of you have been distracted. You've been told something different. I'm talking the Bible to you. People say, well, that's impossible. Well, good news. God is the God of the impossible. He's a miracle working God. And these things come to us instantaneously. And then we grow and mature in it and become well skilled in letting Him rule our life to where we're only living out the life that Father has willed for us rather than living our own choices. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 7. In verse, I'm going to start in verse 5. Paul says, For when we were in the flesh, say, when we were. <clears throat> Amen. Say, I'm not in the flesh anymore. I'm not in the flesh anymore. I'm in the Spirit. I'm in the Spirit. And that Spirit is the Spirit of the Lord. And that Spirit is the Spirit of the Lord. And when we talk about being in the flesh, we're talking about being in a world system. We're talking about being under the governorship of the prince of the power of the air in that context. Now, Jesus was manifested in the flesh, but he was not under the governorship, as it were, of the satanic realm. However, he was subject to sin in the sense that he could be tempted. And I'm going to talk about that later. I'm going to talk about that right now. What I want to say right now is very clearly you've been brought out of darkness in the kingdom of the dear son by this miracle work of grace so that we could say we're no longer in the flesh but in the spirit. So he says when we were in the flesh, he said then at that time the motions of sin, the manifestation of sin. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he's talking about the manifestation or the, uh, uh, of being living epistles is what's resulted in the new nature, in the new birth. Back then, all that was manifested is that we were sold under sin, that we were still separated from God, alienated by wicked works. I'm no longer alienated or separated because Christ Jesus removed the offense, removed the iniquity, and removed the sin out of the way by the sacrifice of Himself, and now says to everybody, both those who are far, far from, from Him with their deeds and wickedness and to those who are up close to them, Him that were people who were devoted to walking with God and serving God and doing what was right. He says to all equally, come on in. Come on in. Step in. Come on in into this life. Come on in. Come on in. It changes all your interest. I'm concerned about People whose interests haven't been changed. I'm concerned about people whose passions aren't been changed. I watch people very closely. I watch them sad in the presence of the Lord, and then they get around people, and they're all happy. And I'm thinking, why can't you be that happy interacting with the Lord? What's wrong with your heart? You still don't see the unseen. 
you're still captivated by that and moved by in your emotions only things, those things which you see. You know man better than you know God. Father doesn't want it that way. And he would take you as little children and he will instruct you and develop you to where you can really truly interact with them. But you've got to be willing to come along. You can't be, stay a child the rest of your life. I meant maybe you can. Paul was writing to the church and he was saying, you're babies. You're still babes. He's saying to them, after such a long time, when you should be old enough to receive these things, you're still those folks that need to be just given, you know, milk. Because you can't give the baby much more than milk milk, it would choke him and it would mess up his stomach, it'd clog up his digestive system. He'd die on you, get bloated stomach, at least be in pain severely. Can't handle it. Father wants you to come on in. He wants you to, he wants you to lay aside all those things that you believe that you, that you know and that you think and start living by what he knows and what he thinks. Something that is brought to us by the power of the Holy Ghost. I hope there's good news to you. There's people in here today. I haven't actually. I've been watching you because I've got great peripheral vision. The Lord blessed me with an amazing peripheral vision. I've not seen you smile one time the whole meeting. Why? You have to, because there's, there's something going on in your attitudes, in your emotions, that God wants to change. He wants to fill you with his emotions, his attitudes. You're stuck in your quality of life. And he's got a quality of life for you that is abundant. It'll put a smile on you. It'll put joy in you. Or you'll be more excited about interacting with him than any human being you see on the, on the planet. You'll be more happy about what he's saying than what your test results were. Walking around, hey, look at what I got. Wow, look at that, wow. Woohoo! <laughs> Celebrate me! Yeah, it's idolatry. So lots of folks caught in that trap. There's a lot of people caught in that trap. And you know what that trap will do? Worse, what it will do, it will hold you back from being able to go where I'm talking about going. It wouldn't be so bad if it was just celebrate me, get all excited about me, if you were also celebrating the Lord. Okay? Reality of it is, celebrate me, the consequences of it keeps you from being able to celebrate the Lord. That's the worst part of it. You've got to watch that stuff. Your mind will play tricks on you. You're not as smart as you think. Believe me. Believe me. That's why it's not about the letter. It's not about the intellect. It's not about what you know. It's about a miracle change that God provides for us when He gives us what He knows by His Spirit. And that's really about kissy, kissy, hug, hug, love, love, want to stay with you, want to be with you, want to be like you, want to do the things you're doing. Amen. Amen. That's what Papa's calling us to do. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Somebody said, does, does the Lord really feel that way? Yeah, He does. When He was at Simon's house, he, a woman comes in, falls down at His feet, begins to worship him, begins to just be so overwhelmed by his goodness. And she begins to kiss his feet, lets down her hair, and begins to dry his feet because her tears saturated his feet. But it was so much that he, she could wash his feet with her tears. That's worship, man. That's being touched. It's being touched deep being touched deeply. <laughs> so I said, well, I did not touch that deeply. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. We'll slam your finger in the door over there. <laughs> we'll hear you howl. Oh, yeah, you are. You touch deeply by the things that are important to you, meaningful to you, valuable to you. God, the Holy Spirit's come to give you a new meaning system, a new value system. He's come to cause you to hunger for things that Otherwise, you wouldn't hunger for. You just hunger for fame and success and the praises of men and 
what you can get in the pleasures of this world. You just hunger for that. He's come to give us a new hunger, to hunger for the realm of a life. It's life more abundantly. It's the life of God. It's the good life. It's the life of joy and peace and goodness. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when you were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by, which were motions that were by the law, because the law was able to point out those motions. Without the law, men could not know or define sin. It wasn't defined. The law defined it so men could see how different they were from God. God has now done this work of grace so that the law is completely removed because now man's been made one with God when they are changed and transformed and redeemed by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord. And so he says, he says, those things, those motions of sin, which the law pointed out, which the law was only the law was able to describe. And of course, Paul's going to spend a lot more time in this chapter explaining that, this verse. Worked in our members to bring forth fruits unto death. What a life. So what fruit do you have? Oh, I got death fruit. Would you like some? No, thank you. I've got pain, I've got sorrow, I've got suffering, I've got loneliness, I've got despair, I've got unhappiness, I've got deep need, I've got hurts, I've got, I've got offenses, I've got bitterness. You don't know how many people have done me wrong. In fact, everybody's done me wrong. Well, what would they have done, needed to do to do you right? Well, the first thing is they need to not correct me. And they need not tell me that I need to change. Huh? And, you know, well... You know, if you really started analyzing that, it would get weird like, quickly. You ought to write that down sometime. Spend some time struggling. What would it look like if people would have done me right in my life? <laughs> Challenge. It, you won't get anywhere with that, so I'll let you, let you off the hook now. But now, verse 6, but now, verse 6, but now something's happened to us. Something's happened. A miracle is taking place. A miracle is taking place. Something's happened to us. We've been delivered from the law. We've been delivered from, as Paul would go in to say in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, where I just left, this condemnation, the law describing to us how different we are from God. How our heart is hard as an adamant stone. How we can't know Him. How we can't interact with Him. All we could do is do our very best to, 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 to live right and, and do what's right and, and hope for God's approval. Well, the law's been gone, dealt, done away with. So that now we are dead. That being dead, wherein we were healed, we're now dead. To the law. We're now dead to the former life. We're now dead to the former interaction with God. And now something's happened. Now, being alive to God, I, I'm putting that in there, being alive to God. I just, I'm putting in a, a statement of my own, just so you know where we're at. That we should serve in newness of spirit. That we should serve by the, the fact that we've been given a new spirit. We've been given the spirit just like the Lord. He gave us his spirit. We've been given a new spirit. It's a newness of life. This is the spirit of the Lord. And where the spirit of the Lord is, you've been liberated. You've been liberated from what the law condemned. And so much that Paul called it the ministry of condemnation. Somebody said, oh, the church is a ministry of condemnation. No, it's not. It's the ministry of righteousness. And just because you don't want to step into the, to this life in Christ Jesus, then, then you're going to be condemned. If you're listening to the voices of the law, you're listening to the voices of, of the powers of darkness, because you're in prison to that, yeah, you're going to be condemned. But if you hear, hear been born of the Spirit, transformed by the power of God, well, it's liberation. It's jubilee. It's proof. I've got a proof. I have a proof. And I'm not going to have it any other way. I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to say, 
Lord, I thank you that you're going to live your life through me today. I give myself to be led by you. I won't allow anything but joy in my life. If all, if all of a sudden I get a little bit upset or discontented about something, I'm going to catch myself right away. I'm going to say, no, 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 we're not doing that. It ain't that important. It's important for me to do what the Lord wants me to do. And he wants me to be happy all the time. He wants me to joy and rejoice. He wants me to trust him. I'm not getting off in that. I'm pulling myself back over here because you and I decide. And then when you live like that, guess what? You grow and mature in that realm to where all of a sudden that is the way that you live. Otherwise, you're making a decision. No, I'm going to be anxious. I'm going to be upset. I'm going to be worried. I'm going to be concerned. I'm going to, I'm going to make my own way. I'm going to fight for everything I got. Whatever. I'm going to be in the midst of the struggle. I'm going to be, cr I'm going to be cranky and short and snappy and whatever. Got to do whatever I'm going to, got to, got to do to get through the day. You're living your own life. What the Lord did when he gave us his Holy Spirit, he put a watch on our mouth. He put the watch on the mouth. So David had to say, pray, put a watch on my mouth. Now, I was born a spirit, watch came to my mouth. And then, and then if I say things that are not pleasing to the Lord, Lord, the Lord corrects me severely. He rebukes me severely. And I say, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me. I put a, you put a watch on my mouth. He keeps the door on my lips. Hallelujah. So that every word that's coming out of my mouth is an offering, a sacrifice to the Lord. And if I tell a lie or if I say something that is not altogether true, I'm immediately, instantly, totally convicted by the Holy Ghost. And I immediately repent. And, and you just go repent to men too. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to start snapping you too. Huh? Had a person telling me the other day how they were, you know, this is what we need to do. And they were creating this scenario. And I'm, I said, what on earth? You don't, don't say that. That's all a lie. Oh. Trying to help soothe something with somebody. Don't do that. And isn't the door, isn't, didn't he put a watch on your mouth to keep the door of your lips? Isn't he governing your heart? Isn't he governing your decision making? Does he still allow us to make decisions? Absolutely. He, just, he, he gives us the choice, choice. And if we choose, say, Lord, I want you to lead me and I want you to guide me and I want you to make this. I want you to fix this. I want you to work this. I want you to perform this. I give myself to you. He'll do it. He'll take the hardest situation and turn it around. He will. He will. People have a whole lot of opinions at the beginning of the process. I've been, I've been through this over and again. They have a whole lot of beginning, think, opinions at the beginning of the process, but time will always be the ally of truth. And they'll discover that it wasn't so bad as they made it. Huh? It wasn't really like they saw it. This is the way it turns. He turns things around. Huh? Will you surrender your life to the one who loves you so much, who wants to fix you? Because you can't fix yourself and nobody else can fix you. Huh? I can save you a lot of money if you're going to a psychologist right now. <laughs> we'll fix all of that. If you've got identity problems, we'll fix you right now. Jesus, bind up the broken heart, all that stuff that messed you up inside, caused you to have a distorted image of yourself, a messed up identity of yourself. You don't know who you are, where you come from. Fix it all. In a moment, in an instant, twinkling of an eye, the power of God to come upon you and change you and show you how to live a new life. Now, you'll have still the choice to go ahead and continue to live your own life. It's just that now you have the ability to know God. Now you have the ability to choose to follow Him. Huh? His father can't make, he could have made it more simple. He said, say, go climb the highest mountain you can find and do, you know, 10,000 push-ups or whatever. And you just simply call upon the name of the Lord. Philip talking to an Ethiopian eunuch about the gospel. The Ethiopian eunuch says, what hinders me? And really, in the whole concept of what he was saying, what hinders me from being saved, baptized, having this new life that you're talking about? Philip said the one most important salient point. He said, nothing hinders you so long as you believe all of your heart. So long as you're really, truly sincere 
about being right with God and knowing God. That's all it takes for the miracle of salvation to take place. Father, I thank you right now for this change of life in Jesus' name. A great change of life. Father, I thank you at this very moment by your mighty power and by the work of your divine grace that there's not a single person in this building today that will leave here unimpacted by your invitation, but that every single person walks out of here with an invitation card printed on their mind and on their heart. And that not a single soul that is listening to me, whether they're here in this building right now or listening to me on the web or, by, or, or, or listening by way of the YouTube will reject this invitation. But will simply in an honest and sincere heart cry out to you to be saved. Now, I'm going to say this one last thing. That's really dealing with that sincerity. You know, God didn't make a mistake when he used the word saved. Because that is a word that describes that you desperately want to be rescued. You find yourself drowning and you need a lifeline. You find yourself about to be destroyed by the situations and circumstances of life and you need someone come deliver you. That's when you're going to touch heaven. That's when things will change. That's when it all begins. That's when it all begins. That's when this life all begins. One of the tragic things about religion is I've watched many people born into religion and all they've ever, all, all they've ever known is the ritual of religion. And I'm talking about Christian religion. They've never been desperate about God. Been desperate about their religion, but not about Him. And today, in the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing of the Holy Ghost breaks off that yoke. So every form of blindness, no matter what form it comes in, whether it comes in the form of sin, whether it comes in the form of religion, no matter what form it comes in, that blindness leaves you today in Jesus' mighty name so that you can decide for yourself how interested you are in the life that God has for you. Everybody, would you stand with me? Don't delay. Don't delay any longer. Don't put things off. Today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. Once again, you need to decide how much you're going to seek the Lord. How much you're going to yield to Him. Somebody says, well, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. And I've got, I've got these important things to take care of and those important things to take care of. I can't give 10% of my time this year to the Lord. I know I raised my hand and said I would, but I just can't. I, I can't be in all the meetings. Well, why, why, why would you want to be in all the meetings? I want, well, what do you mean, why would I want to be in all the meetings? I want to be in more meetings. Because for me, there is an interaction with the presence of the Lord. That although I have a continual, ongoing interaction with the presence of the Lord in my daily life, it's, it's beautiful. Friday night was beautiful. If you, were in the, if you were in the house, Friday night was beautiful. You could probably have some beauty on the web, but I mean, it was beautiful in the house. It's beautiful here right now. Just knowing him, coming to know him. What do you want? What do you want? What, what kind of life do you want? Today, I'm going to ask you one more time, what are you going to do with Jesus? What will you do with Jesus? What things will you be willing to have that he's provided. If you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, right now do it. 
If you're desperate about change, all you have to do is call out to God and He'll answer you. He'll change you. But He wants complete change. He doesn't want a little bit. He wants complete change. But it's a change that He will produce for us. You don't have to produce for yourself. Somebody said, well, when I get a little bit better, when things get settled in my life, then I'm going to turn my life over to the Lord. You're, you're sounding me, to me like you think that you're going to produce a change that's going to be acceptable to God. You don't produce a change that's acceptable to God. You call out to Him because you're desperate enough and He produces a change that's acceptable to Him and you discover you're different. So you decide what day is it that you want to be different than you are right now. And I'm talking about a good different. If it was a bad different, forget about it. It's a good different. I'm talking about a change of life that's not a bad change. It's a good change. It's the very life of God coming into your life. If you're willing to believe this today, then just call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then after having called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and this work of grace takes place in your life, decide you're going to live in that life of service to Him, to be trained by Him. That's why the Holy Spirit came, came to be our teacher. He came to guide us and show us how to live this life, and without Him we can't live it. Without His direction and without His correction, without His instruction, we can't live this life. And without the new birth, we can't even understand or connect in any way with His direction or with His instruction. So right now, we want you to be born, with, born of the Spirit. Maybe you've backslidden. Maybe you've grown cold. Maybe you're lukewarm. People that are lukewarm, they're not on fire for the things of God. They don't want to be in all the meetings. They just, they just come whenever it seems to suit their interest. Well, that's, you're not right with God. Don't let anybody tell you you're right with God. I ain't right with God. That's lukewarm. Jesus said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I have no fellowship with you. There's no relationship. Once again, God's not interested in being an object of religious ritual. He wants a relationship. He said, I'm not going to have a relationship with someone who's lukewarm about the thing. Were lukewarm people ever born of the Spirit? Absolutely. Otherwise, they'd have never become lukewarm. At some point, did they receive this miracle of salvation? Absolutely. But something happened in their priorities. Something happened and what they wanted for their life. Jesus said, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, is coming in, but those alone who do the will of the Father. I'm going to live for His will. If you're going to live for His will, I want you to raise your hand right now to heaven. I'm going to say, I, say Jesus, Jesus, I'm going to live for you. Live for you. Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit, take over everything about my life. Take over about my life. I give myself, I give myself to, be by you, to be led by you, to be taught by you, to be ruled by you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, turn to a bunch of people, tell them that you love them, bless them in Jesus' name. Find a bunch of people around you, tell them that you love them, bless them in the name of the living God. Especially somebody that you don't know. Dear people, let me just remind you to worship the Lord with your tithes and with your offerings. Let me remind you, keep God first in your finances. Watch what will happen to your finances. Obey God in every area of your life and you'll find nothing but increase. You'll find nothing but multiplication. Hallelujah.